culturally and linguistically diverse populations are people with different um, cultures, different religious beliefs, different languages. It's very important to look at these populations because 46% of our population uh, comes from diverse backgrounds, either a parent who's a migrant or people who've recently arrived as new immigrants or refugees. If we start scratching underneath the surface a bit deeper than that around what the needs are of specific communities within that 46%, I guess we know very little. And so the purpose of, that, of this discussion paper and the purpose of the National Mental Health Commission engaging with MEMA was for us to be able to explore and understand those issues uh, a lot more. There, there's a great deal of uh, work that can be done uh, that will improve access and also improve outcomes for call consumers of our mental health services. I think some of the things that we need to do is to recognise that there are important gaps in our knowledge and to focus our research on those most important areas where there are gaps. We're in an interesting, interesting time where a significant uh, reform is happening across our health se sector in Australia. Uh, if we are to get those reforms right, and some of these reforms are like once in a generation, they're going to have profound implications for the next 20 to 30 years. There's a lot that policymakers, those who design services, those who deliver them, uh, including organisations of people who themselves have experienced mental health problems in their families and community organisations, can do to improve the current situation. The first thing they can do is work together. They can understand each other, understand each other's perspectives and actually work towards a common goal. I think one of the things that the Commission has already done is that it has identified what that goal is. And that is that people who are experiencing mental illness are able to live what the Commission is calling a contributing life, which means basically being a full citizen, uh, having all the rights, but also the obligations and responsibilities, including contributing to the general welfare by working, paying taxes, being a full member of society, um, having the best possible health they can, but even if they continue to experience symptoms of a mental illness, being able to move down that path of recovery which means being living as full a life as possible, despite the fact that there might be some continuing problems that are associated with a mental illness. My name's Ben Lam. I live in mental health condition. I was born in Cambodia. I moved to Vietnam in 1979. When two refugees came in somewhere in in Vietnam. Papa locked me up three times. One bring me go to kill. My uncle sponsor all my family go to New Zealand. From New Zealand come to New Australia. The only one month I got a job working in a restaurant, Cambodia restaurant. The reason this research was commissioned was because actually we don't know uh, what information is collected about culturally and linguistically diverse populations. We know that there is some collection, but we didn't know the extent to. Uh, and the other reason for commissioning this research was to be able to share with the Commission and people who make the decisions what information does actually need to be collected so that when we're designing mental health services for all Australians, including people from cold backgrounds, that we actually have the necessary information for those decisions to be made. We know, for instance, that some communities have lower suicide rates. Yeah. Um, what can we learn from that? And how can that information be really useful for the whole Australian population in terms of developing suicide prevention mm. programs? The main thing that we know about mental health determinants, issues to do with decision making about seeking help, uh, beliefs and attitudes towards mental illness, the main thing that we know is the incredible heterogeneity. And let's leave call communities aside for the moment. If you look at the Australian-born population, there's enormous variation in what people think about health and illness, about what they do when they feel unwell. There's a massive alternative kind of health market, which is an indicator of how much variation there is in what people think. This is even more pronounced when you've got people coming from very different cultural backgrounds who've had very different experiences. 
From the human point of view, I guess we all have emotions and feelings, but the way that we interpret and understand those feelings are shaped by culture. So people come from different backgrounds where they speak different languages. They may not necessarily call mental health mental health in the way that you and I might talk about mental health. They may not feel it's something that requires them to seek help. Or if they feel that they want to seek help, they may be coming into a system that doesn't necessarily understand them. So what people understand by mental illness uh, varies a lot. Uh, whether they recognise it as primarily a health problem or as some other kind of problem, just a general problem of living in terms of relationships, it might be couched in religious terms, it might be couched in a number of other ways. So there's a lot of variation in how people think about mental health and illness. The issues about help seeking um, depend on what people believe, but they also, it also depends on how much people know. So particularly for people who are recently arrived, they will have a very limited understanding of how our health system works, how to gain access to the right service, um, how to negotiate all of the practical things that need to be done in order to make an appointment, see the right person, uh, follow the, the, the kind of recommendations that are being made. I think my case on came myself. I don't know who bring me to the hospital. I have no idea. When I sick, I stop. I can't do anything. I can't sleep, can't eat, can't even hear a voice. I'm always angry. Don't want to take medication. There is a great deal of work that's being done, but it's investigator-initiated work, which is very important, but it's kind of patchy. We know a lot about the Vietnamese community, a lot of work has been done, but we know next to nothing about many other communities. A language barrier can be a really important thing. So uh, if we've got increased diversity, making sure that we have services that are accessible in terms of language and cultural competence is really important. One of the clearest things that we know is that people from call, some particular call communities use mental health services at much lower rates than the Australian-born community. What we don't know is what the reasons for that are. We don't know whether it's because they have lower rates of mental illness, so the lower rate of use is perfectly appropriate. We don't know whether it's primarily to do with difficulties in access or barriers to access. We don't know whether it's because people have very different ideas and so consider mental health services not appropriate to their needs. I think we need to start getting smarter about identifying the key questions and then encouraging researchers to come and investigate those issues so that we can, we can actually inform what we're doing as part of our reform process. Stigma reduction is an important issue. Um, even more important than stigma reduction is reducing discrimination. So I think stigma reduction can sometimes be difficult. It mean, means changing people's attitudes. But what we can do more effectively is prevent discrimination from happening. What we've learned from other countries is it's really important to have good data and it's really important then to use that data to make services more accessible because you've got an evidence base. But if we actually don't have the data, we could be making some really poor decisions around where that investment goes to improve mental health services. One indicator of whether our services are doing what we hope that they would do is whether everybody who needs them can actually get access to them. So one issue is coverage. Are the services available equitably to every Australian, regardless of whether they speak English or not, or regardless of whether they can pay, or regardless of whether they live in a major urban centre like Melbourne or they live in the bush, they should have access to the best possible services. So a, a, a short-term indicator is, can people get the sort of help they need when they need it, and in the way that is most helpful to them. 
a sort of a mid-term indicator um, is outcomes. Once people come into contact with services, are they getting the sort of outcomes from treatment, rehabilitation, social support that those services are designed to provide? A longer term indicator, and I think this is something that the Commission is, is very strong on, is are people living as full members of society? And one of the key markers of that is employment. Can people get a job despite the fact that they've got a mental illness or are continuing to deal with mental health problems? And if they've got a job, can they hang on to it? Are they treated respectfully um, when they're by their workmates and their employers? Are they experiencing discrimination in their general uh, contact, uh, going about their daily lives? Do they have stable and safe housing, which is the base from which people can actually live a, a good life? When I feel better, I'm always help the nerd, help the kitchen lady clean up the the carpet, anything, and I look after by myself. I live by myself for five years a year. I stop drinking coffee. I go to year 2009, I go to tap. Learn, do some cooking. I got strip kit one, strip kit two. And some people, they don't understand English, Cambodia people and Vietnam people. They not only ask me to explain for them. I say, okay, I explain. Maybe I talk to them. I have talked to anyone. Tell them don't drink coffee too much and go back home drink your medication. The fifth I want to get a full-time job. I can't do any job. I got a job, I'm very happy. I saving money, sometimes maybe I buy the house. Given how diverse the country is and given that we're not talking about a minority population, we're talking about half the population, then not actually making the extra effort to include everybody so that we get a full picture of the Australian population actually leaves us with a partial view about those important issues to do with mental health. That outcomes information is the best information about how well our mental health services are performing. And we want to know about mental health system performance. Uh, we invest a lot of money in it and we expect it to perform very well, but we also expect it to perform well for everybody, not just for some.